All right, well, it is known that anytime you have a polynomial function that has a degree n, um, you can have at most n real zeros and at most n minus 1 relative extrema. And that means you have either, uh, you know, if you have a degree of 4, then you would have 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 is going to be either, no, it's going to be 3, which means you're going to have three curves in your graph. So you'd have 1, 2, 3. So you have degree four, it should be opening up or opening down, but you're gonna have three curves. So that means you're gonna have two max and one min, or you'd have two min and one max. Um, <clears throat> this will help you a little bit when you are graphing, but whenever you're trying to find your zeros of a function, um, then what we can do is we can kind of follow these little rules where x equals a is a zero of the function. A is what we're gonna use as um, with synthetic division. So if you have x equals a is a zero, it's also a solution. Well, x minus a is your factor. So your zeros and your factors are always opposite signs. Um, <coughs> so let's look at our first problem here. Uh, we need to find all of our real zeros of this function. So algebraically, what that means is you are probably gonna have to factor if you can. Okay, that's always your first option. If you can't factor, then we're gonna have to do the P or Q thing and find our zeros. So we're gonna factor and set this equation, whoops, equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract 12x squared plus 36x equals zero. So if we take out an x, then what that means is we'll have left over x squared minus 12x plus 36 equals zero. So we should be able to factor this a little bit further. We need factors of 36 up to a negative 12. Well, that's gonna be x minus six and x minus six. So algebraically, if we set each of these equal to zero, you say x equals zero, x minus six equals zero, and x minus six equals zero, we're actually gonna get a double root here. Um, we're gonna get one zero right here, at x equals zero. The other one, you're gonna have x equals six and x equals six. Now, when you have two of them, you always write your answers, um, you always write it just once, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one little step further, and we're gonna say we have a zero at zero, we have a zero at six, but you need to write down how many you have. Well, when you do that, if you have more than one, what we do is we say we have a multiplicity of two. So that is how you would state your zeros for this function. Now if you have three of the same zeros, that means you're gonna have a multiplicity of three. If you have a multiplicity of one, where you only have it once, you don't have to write it out. Uh, you don't actually have to write out multiplicity of one. Um, now graphically, what you're gonna have to do is you can uh, graph your equation, and I'm gonna show you how to find the zeros of your function on your graphing calculator. So on your calculator, you're gonna to wanna to plug in x to the third power minus, make sure you cursor to the right, go minus 12x squared, so you have a squared button, plus 36x, <coughs> and we're gonna hit the graph button, and it's gonna show us our pretty little graph here. Oh, wow, that looks kinda weird. Well, if this looks a little weird, that's because your graph is coming up so straight, and it's going up, it's because of the pixels. This is like not a, this is kind of like the original Nintendo we used in order to try to view this. It doesn't have very many pixels as compared to like, you know, the Xbox Ones and the PS4s and stuff like that, where you feel like you're actually in the game. Here, I don't really feel like I'm in the graph. But anyway, what you can do is you can tell that your graph has an X here, and we also have an X intercept here. The best way to find those is to hit second trace and we're gonna hit two for zero, and then we need to find a left bound and a right bound. So cursor to the left, we think we should have one at zero. So this is below, so we're gonna hit enter, and that's so the x is negative. And we're gonna go to the right of it, where x is positive, hit enter. So one answer would be zero, zero. Cha-ching. Now our other zero is gonna be here. So we're gonna hit second trace, two for zero, and I'm going to choose between 5 as my left bound and 7 as my right bound. 
And when for the guess, we hit enter again, and it gives us a zero of 5.999. Well, that's going to round up to six. So that's another way to find it. Now, here's something really important to think about. You know, this is why we talked about our multiplicities. Um, when you have just one zero, that goes through your x-axis. If you have a multiplicity that is an even number, notice what happens at your zero. Well, the graph comes down, touches that point on your x-axis, flips back up. So anytime you have a multiplicity of an even number, your graph is just touching your x-axis, but it's not actually going through it.